we try to stay on top of them, scammers seem to find cunning new ways to get a hold of our personal information, sometimes our money. AARP has teamed up with BECU to track down the latest scams as well as the older ones making a comeback. Can you believe it? Please welcome from BECU financial crimes analyst Janelle Pike. It's good to have you here. Yeah. Everything old is new again when it comes to these crimes. Okay, so there are these new terms, and we've all heard about phishing, where people are trying to get you to give your personal information. Um, but let's talk about what that means, the PH phishing. Yes, so phishing is an old tale of phone calls and emails where they try to get you to give out your personal information. Now they've included things such as voicemails and text messages, which is the smishing and phishing portion. What should you do? If you get a phone call, do you just hang up? Don't respond. You don't have to answer to anyone on the phone, and none of us will be offended if you don't. <laughs> um, call back the phone number on the back of your card or go to that company's legitimate website mm -hmm. if you do have dealings with them and find a phone number on there. I get more of these from banks of all sorts, and some of them, the other day, it said an important message and it had misspelled important. <laughs> I thought, Okay, that's not hard to spot, but some of these really look real. And they're very targeted, so they know who saturates the area and the zip code in which they're calling. They know as well as we do right. who has the market share and who would bank there. So banks are an easy target, as well as any financial institution or any company that's in the area to say, you have a problem with your account and I need you to act urgently. Right. So it's so just- give it, you know, Sign in with your password at this link kind of thing and, and just, just delete that. Don't touch anything in that. Right? Delete it. Correct. Okay. You can always so, call us back. <laughs> what is vishing with a V? So that's going to be any voicemail they leave um, that's at the end of a phone call saying, we need your urgent reaction. Uh, we need for you to reply to this sort of information. So it's a voicemail asking for you to return a call and mm -hmm. act back or give out your card information or for you to do something. And so don't call that number back. Again, just respond to the company, the 800 number, whatever it is that you've got on your information, your genuine information. Correct. And okay. if you don't do business with them, don't return the call. Right. Smishing. What is a smish? So, this is new to me. <laughs> yes, it's a text message, mm -hmm. um, also known as an SMS message. Oh, an SMS, okay. Yes, so they will um, text you acting like a legitimate company again, or somebody you're doing business with, or even a friend or a family member. They spoof the phone number to look like something that would legitimately come to you. So you don't need to reply to those either, or click on links. And again, at the other end, no one's going to ask you for your information directly, so you don't need to send over a card number, name, or email no through legit. text organization is going to ask you for that, so you Correct. don't need to worry. Okay, so why do we think the voicemail and the texting scams are on the rise now? I think they're on the rise because it is so easy to look like a friend or family member, and we're so used to responding in that manner. It comes to our personal devices. It's a number we don't give out to our friends. Mm -hmm. We only give out to our friends and family. So how are other people getting this information? But they just randomly dial. And there you go. Okay, robocalls. How do mm -hmm. we protect ourselves from those? Right, so the robocalls are going to come in um, and they won't, all they need is one person to respond to those and they have a reason to continue going. So for the robocalls that come in and they, you watch for key signs. Do they ask for you to act urgently on something? Is it a call you're expecting to get? Mm -hmm. um, so really just, again, not responding to those. Okay, love scams. Yes, this one plays on that emotion that all of us have, which is, I love this person or I want to love someone. And so the first kind of school of thought on this is the old one we've heard of dating someone online. They don't ask for your money or help right away. They build trust. And then they move on from that and a crisis happens. So one we've seen is that somebody is on an oil rig. So they have valid reason to not respond to you, but they have a crisis or they need help. So they ask for things like gift cards or money orders or wire transfers to help get them out of a bind, mm -hmm. but they have a reason not to see you. The other school of thought that is now starting to happen with these love scams is that it's someone you already know. So they pose as your niece or nephew um, or your grandchild and say, I'm in trouble now and you need to give me money to get out of the situation. And before you can even react or ask that loved one where they are, you're already giving them money because right. you just want to save them. That, that's so sad. Tax scams. It's that season, yeah. <laughs> so it's coming up already. Right. So there's another kind of two ways that they go about this. One with all the identity theft that's going on lately. 
they file early and they file to get all of your money before you can. So they go get your refund before you can get it. Right, and then you go to file it and the IRS says to you, you already filed this year. Lordy, What's do you going have any on? recourse? What do you do? You have to file with them and let them know that you didn't Yikes. file this year and that can take some time. Okay, well let's talk about, not everybody has a shredder, but we probably should, mm -hmm. right? And do we want the crosscut shredder at home to to help protect our identity? Yes, shred it when you're at home. Um, shred and dispose of documents most urgently. Right. Um, what is gonna be the most protectful is you. So don't give your information out, don't write it down, don't carry it with you, but when you have to have it, dispose of it correctly. And you have an event to help people with this. We do. This Saturday, the 21st, we have a location at the Everett Mall our Tuckwilla facility and Federal Way. We're gonna have a free shred event from nine to one. So just bring all your stuff in and we can shred it. And okay. it's just, is it just paper shredding? We're not doing electronics or anything, just paper. We're doing electronics too. Oh, so okay, bring great. your electronics down. And you can get rid of those safely as yep. well. Thank you don't want anyone so getting a hold of your old stuff. No, your old phone or something like that it has tons of good stuff in there if you're trying to do bad things. BECU's right. free paper shredding and e-cycling event takes place Saturday, October 21st at locations in Western and Eastern Washington. For more on this and other ways to protect yourselves from fraud, please visit AARP Seattle's website. It's there on your screen. And you can find more on our homepage including the complete list of locations for the shredding and e-cycling event. And I know you've got stuff in your garage that you want to get rid of, so this is the time. <laughs> yes. Still, I had a look at a film about a child growing up in the shadow of the happiest place on Earth, but this is no Disney adventure. The director of The Florida Project joins us after this.